Yeah, so what I'm going to be talking about Fermat's last theorem, which is uh, maybe the most notorious problem in the history of maths. And it was developed, uh, invented, and supposedly solved by Pierre de Fermat. So he changed the equation. So instead of being x squared, he looked at x cubed plus y cubed equals z cubed. x to the fourth plus y to the fourth equals z to the fourth. x to the n plus y to the n equals z to the n, where n is bigger than 2. And Fermat wanted to know, do any of these equations have whole number solutions? Although he, he claims he found a proof for his conjecture, um, he never wrote down that proof. I have a truly marvellous demonstration of this proposition, which this margin is too narrow to contain. So I can prove that this is true, but I don't have the space to write it down. And then he dropped dead. And so after his death, every other mathematician worth his salt or her salt tried to rediscover Fermat's proof. And the more they tried, the more they failed, and the more they failed, the more um, desirable this proof became. And it plagued mathematics for centuries. And eventually, a chap called Andrew Wiles uh, took on the challenge. And he worked on it in secret for seven years and eventually found a proof of Fermat's last theorem. So I'm going to be talking about a bit about Pierre de Fermat, a bit about what the uh, conjecture is, a bit about Andrew Wiles, and a bit about his journey uh, towards finding a proof. He worked in secrecy. Not just for a few days, not just for a few weeks, not just for a few months, but for seven years. For seven years, he did nothing but work on this one problem. So I, I'm a, a science journalist and a science... Um, uh, I, I used to be a TV producer and director. And uh, I've written a book about Fermat's last theorem, and I've made a film about it for the BBC. And um, so it's a, it's a story that I know very well. And uh, so it's nice to go back to that story and retell it. Uh, I mean, see, the great thing is that when I was a teenager, Fermat's last theorem was a great problem that, that teachers would taunt you with. Um, now it's been proven. So um, hopefully it's a story that, that you can't be taunted with, but one that can hopefully inspire people to, to become more interested in mathematics and perhaps study it further. Somebody once said to me, if you're going to get a job, um, it's something that you should be good at, something that you like doing, and something that somebody will pay you to do. And, and so I think that's the case with maths. Um, if you're good at it and if you love it, um, and, and you'll certainly get a job at the end of it, um, those are the three reasons, perhaps, to, to go and study maths. So if you're thinking about studying maths and you're thinking, well, I don't know where it will take me, I wouldn't worry about that because there are just a whole range of careers, a whole range of areas where people desperately want mathematicians. Some people will, will get the greatest thrill they can from from exploring complex mathematical ideas. Uh, those same people presumably are very skilled at mathematics as well. And those same people will uh, be highly desirable in the job market, whether that's in academia and, and academic research, or whether it's out there in industry, or whether it's working in the city. Because people who can solve and deal with mathematical problems have the kind of problem-solving skills that the rest of the world is desperate to, to, to have. They're, they're creative, they're determined, um, they, can, they can think outside the box and so on. Um, I, I once gave a talk and I said, oh, study maths because it's fun and it's wonderful and you'll love it and, and the world is lovely. And then I heard um, Marcus de Sotoy give a talk and he said, um, actually studying maths is tedious and dull and boring and hard work and the most wonderful thing you can imagine. And I think that's probably said, uh, well, a truer well, reflection, well, that it well, is well, tough. Well, University well, maths well. is not at all easy. But if you have the ability and if you have the enthusiasm and the joy for maths, then it is you know, an extraordinarily wonderful adventure. So I would encourage people to do it if, if they think they're up to the challenge.